Introducing YouTube Memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. A while ago, I talked about this scheme right here, which was a 1986 battle between Tennessee and New Mexico, where, if you can believe it, the Vols were supposed to play a game on the road at University Stadium in New Mexico. The whole story behind that game is somewhat crazy, as there was a ton of politics involved, some stadium issues, and eventually, the game got moved to Tennessee. It's a bizarre situation that you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, at the end of the day, Tennessee won the game by a final score of 35-21, to in a surprisingly close game, which was the second and to date, the final time ever that the Volunteers and the Lobos squared off. But what you might not know is that the first meeting between these teams featured a ton of drama as well off the field, even if there wasn't so much on the field due to the rather one-sided nature of the game itself. Unlike the second game, this one was supposed to take place in Tennessee the whole time. Unlike the second game, at least from everything I could tell, this one didn't have a bunch of issues beforehand when it came to actually scheduling the dang thing. However, unlike the second game, this one featured an absolute disaster of a broadcast, and a highly controversial affair, that 40 years later, deserves to be talked about for just how terrible it was, as the broadcast was so bad and so sloppily done that the station airing the game, KOB TV, legitimately almost lost sponsors midway through as a result. Because this is the story behind one of the craziest broadcasting controversies of the entire 1983 college football season. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand the actual game itself and how that was going. Because as bad as it was going for New Mexico on the field, trust me, it was about to get a whole lot worse off the field. It's September 10th, 1983, and we've got a non-conference battle on our hands over at Neyland Stadium between the New Mexico Lobos and the Tennessee Volunteers. Obviously, I'm not sure too many people thought that New Mexico was going to win this one, even if they were 1-0 following a victory against Utah, and the Vols were 0-1 following a loss to a number 10 ranked pit team. But you never know. Crazy things have happened in this sport before. But still, for New Mexico, there was a lot to play for. They were 10-1 the previous year and didn't go bowling. While Tennessee, despite finishing the regular season with a 6-4-1 record, went bowling. So even though there was no prior history between these two schools, and no real reason for Tennessee and New Mexico to hate each other, the Lobos, despite being 14-point underdogs, really wanted to stick it to the balls. Said running back Michael Johnson on the importance of this game, this is our bowl game for last year's season. So who knows? Maybe New Mexico can extend their winning streak to eight games dating back to last season. Maybe New Mexico can pick up what would probably be their biggest win in program history in a regular season game. Maybe they can do the seemingly impossible. Or they could completely lay an egg. Yeah, everything about this game for the Lobos was ugly with a capital U. Because to the surprise of very few people, the Volunteers were in complete control of this entire contest, taking it by a final score of 31-6, in a game that wasn't even that close, seeing as the Lobos were trailing 31-0 until midway through the fourth quarter in complete garbage time, when the backups were in the contest. Considering the fact that Tennessee picked up over 200 yards rushing, and the Lobos had just 90 yards rushing on a mere 2.25 yards per carry, it's no real surprise that the Vols dominated this one, even if they didn't force a turnover all game. The roughly 90,000 fans at Pac Nealon Stadium got to see their volunteers win a game that, let's be honest, was never really in any doubt. Which raises the question, 
If you were a New Mexico fan and you wanted to watch this game on television, could you? Well, the answer to that was yes. Yes, you could. However, if you did watch this game, you were treated to an absolute disaster of a broadcast where it might have genuinely been better if you didn't watch it live. And instead, just watch the highlights of it afterwards or watched it on tape delay. Because trust me, it was that bad. And the problem started right away, when New Mexico and Tennessee came to a little bit of a disagreement with the pace of play. If you've ever watched a college football game before, you know about television timeouts. These are breaks in the action that are specifically designed for the purpose of having the network broadcasting the game cut to commercial, so they can show advertisements. Without TV timeouts, let's be honest, we wouldn't be seeing a whole lot of college football games on TV, because the networks need to find a way to make money off of the game somehow, and they do it by selling advertising space. Love them or hate them, TV timeouts dictate the flow of the entire broadcast. The only problem? The SEC, as in the conference that Tennessee plays in, did not allow for TV timeouts back in 1983, unless both teams agreed beforehand. If both schools agree that the television revenue from the game was worth the inconvenience of having the TV timeouts, then they would agree on having the timeouts. If the game was not on TV, or the potential revenue wasn't really that good, then they wouldn't have the timeouts. Now why you wouldn't just have the TV timeouts in the first place, I'm not sure, since it means the game goes out longer, meaning more people buy concessions, and you could have some sponsor promotions in between the breaks and the money made from those likely outweigh the added cost of paying the workers for an additional hour of time spent at the stadium. But regardless, for this game, Tennessee did not agree to have TV timeouts. KOB Channel 4, as in the station in New Mexico that was broadcasting the game, paid Tennessee $1,000 for the rights to air the game. And that wasn't exactly enough for the Vols to necessarily cooperate with the Lobos on this. So even though the game was being televised in New Mexico, it was without any television timeouts. The pace of play would pretty much be as it normally was, as if the game wasn't being shown on television in the first place. But wait a second, KOB was broadcasting the game, and they paid a good amount of money to do so. How were they going to make their money back and satisfy their sponsors without any TV timeouts? Simple, we'll make our own. Which means, you guessed it, the broadcast went to commercial multiple times throughout the game while action was still taking place. If you remember watching the 1990 World Cup on TNT, remember how TNT had no idea how to make money off of a sport that didn't have commercial breaks? So they thought that the best possible solution was to just show commercials during the game itself, leading to missed action and lots of outrage? Yep. That's what KOB TV did here. Among the many lowlights included the final play of the first quarter being missed, seeing as there were 20 seconds left on the clock, and KOB wanted to squeeze another commercial in, and a fourth and one play where they cut to commercial. Great time to cut to a break. But if you thought that was all, oh, just you wait, because it somehow gets even worse. Because as if the cutting to commercials during the game itself wasn't a problem, KOB had another problem on their hands, and that was the fact that they couldn't send their usual crew to Knoxville. I mean, they could. It's not like Tennessee was barring them from doing so. However, to send 15 people and all of that equipment from New Mexico to Tennessee is a tall order. It's pretty expensive, and the station was already in the whole four figures to get the broadcasting rights to the game, and was already not going to make as much as they thought because of Tennessee's refusal, per SEC rules, to cooperate with them regarding television timeouts. So this meant that KOB had to put together a production crew at the last minute that was completely makeshift. Instead of actually having a crew with chemistry that knew what they were doing, KOB had a crew that they knew nothing about that was thrown together with a bunch of freelancers at the last minute. But hey, if you've got a good director, as in 
the man in the production truck calling all the shots and telling the cameras where to be stationed and trying to make the broadcast go as swimmingly as possible, then you can make it work. This ragtag broadcast, however, that did not have that at all. Because this broadcast was being directed by a 21-year-old. Now look, I'm not ageist whatsoever. I would be incredibly hypocritical if I said that a 21-year-old should not be directing a college football game. Because I did broadcasting in undergrad for all four years. And I had some absolutely great directors who were even younger than that at times. Heck, one director that I knew was an absolute natural at this by the end of his freshman year at the age of 19, and today works on ESPN broadcasts. Another one came into college at 17 and was crushing it by the end of her freshman year and is now working for NBC. You can be super young and do a killer job at directing a game. However, the problem with this director, according to Rick Snell, a sportscaster for KOB, was that, and I quote, he admitted that he didn't like football very much. Uh, okay then. A 21-year-old who's barely of legal age is directing a football game despite the fact that he doesn't like football and would rather be bothered doing anything else besides that. That is an absolute recipe for disaster. And obviously, you don't have to like the sport to direct it or do your job at it. There are plenty of people who work in sports that for them, it's just a business. But if you're directing a game and calling the shots, you should at least, you know, have an idea of what the sport is and what you're doing. And clearly, this 21-year-old did not. I don't even know why you'd be dumb enough to admit that. How desperate are you? And how bad are you with the hiring process that the man calling the shots is a man who openly admitted to you, yeah, I don't really like this sport. It's like hiring a principal who says that he doesn't like working with kids. Or hiring a driving instructor who says that he doesn't like driving. Like you're telling me that this was the absolute best option you had available at your disposal? Holy cow. And this broadcast was such a disaster that KLB almost ended up losing sponsors as a result. Mid-game and post-game, some companies that had deals to advertise with the station for the 1983 New Mexico football season called up the station and tried to back out of their agreement because this broadcast was so bad. Somehow, KLB dodged that bullet because everyone stayed with them going forward, probably because Jerry Denzinger, the general manager for the station, convinced them that this was a one-time thing that was completely out of their control and that all future broadcasts would either be done by their crew, or by a crew that had actual experience broadcasting games, like KATV, which broadcast plenty of Arkansas games in the past, and was responsible for the New Mexico-Arkansas broadcast the following week. But this particular broadcast against Tennessee? Yeah, this was an absolute disaster. Just to recap this broadcast from hell, you had a station that had to insert television timeouts in the middle of the game and had to make up their own TV timeouts. And you had the game being directed by a kid who had no idea what he was doing, who probably had no experience working football before, and who openly admitted that he didn't even like the sport that he was working. Watching New Mexico's offense do nothing and be shut out 31-0 after three quarters was probably less frustrating than watching this absolute train wreck of a broadcast. Because on this day in 1983, I think it's safe to say that this game at Rocky Top had a Rocky broadcast. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.